So we did it. One of the most famous destinations for big adventure bikes. North Cap. We went there, we went back and we had a lot of fun in the middle. Now, that's what I call a successful trip. But was it really worth it? Or do some of us make a big deal out of it? I'll share my thoughts with you in this video. For those who don't know me, my name is Alexis and I love to experience thrilling adventures. I like to go out there in the wilderness, to live in a tent for a few days and to explore on a motorcycle. Alex! On est au ferry? Et on est trompé! On est arrivé! So, the trip started in Paris in France. We had a 1000 km ride under the rain on the highway heading to Travemundi in Germany. We take the ferry that would bring us to Finland. Arriving here at the ferry is a relief, mostly because we arrived just a few minutes before boarding was closed. Very excited. We've just ridden a thousand kilometers under heavy rain and strong winds, with no tires at night, so it felt right to celebrate with a beer at two o'clock in the morning before a 30 hours trip at sea. The café is served, mon loulou. We just arrived at NCG. This is it. We're here, boys. So we are two riders. Are you traveling or or working here? Traveling or working? Traveling. 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 Yeah. So you have to wait, please. You can go by yourself. Okay. Yes. Bon, on a à peine sorti du bateau que on est déjà coincé. I ride a 2021 KTM 1290 Super Adventure R, and Alex is riding the Xvana Northern 901. This is the first time we got that far from home with our own bikes. And 30 hours later, we're finally here in Finland. The adventure can begin. This is our first night in the country. We found the perfect place for the night, just like we imagined. Hey guys, it's uh, midnight and the sun is still not down, so it's quite uh, surprising and it's quite difficult to go to sleep. On the first day of riding, we don't like of excitement. We jump on the bikes early and we hit tens of kilometers of dust to travel. Honestly, on our first riding day, we were most disappointed. There's not much to see in this part of Finland except small houses and gravel roads. It's crowded and it just doesn't meet with our expectations. C'est marrant à quel point elle elle cale mais c'est toi qui fais les wheelings. C'est toi qui fais les trucs cool et dès que c'est pas cool, c'est elle. Il y a un, deux, trois. 
We've read about Finland before coming here, and we know there's much more than this. The experience of a vast outpost, heavily forested with numerous rivers and extensive areas of marshland. The northern remote country of Europe, that's what we're here for. I read so much stuff about Finland and it has a strong bear population in its eastern part, pretty much where we are. And there's something about it that is mixed between fear and excitement. A condition of going in this country was to not sleep alone. Yet tonight we experience something new. Uh, look, my friend, um, probably one of the most difficult morning of the trip. All right, friends, that was probably the worst ID of the trip. <laughs> it's like freaking cold. <laughs> and it's five o'clock in the morning. It's 5 o'clock in the morning. Okay. And it's completely daylight. So we cannot sleep. Just gonna make a fire and try to warm up. Rather than going back to sleep, we hit the road and have a quick nap later in the morning. After four days on the road, we finally take advantage of this hold for a bath in the lake. But a quick one, because it's freaking cool. But I'm telling you, it wakes you up, something I definitely needed. It's just another moving down The sky looks grey and never's bound to flow Your days are feeling just the same For a long time you've been off your game Don't care to play young cat to keep us cold What we find is unexpected. A big sandy quarry where we can play with our bikes. But they quickly remind us they are fully loaded adventure bikes and it makes it harder to play in the sand. We are ahead of schedule, so we can spend some time playing around and making content. Then comes the time to look for a nice location to spend the night. This one was hard to find. And we ride more than an hour searching for that specific place. Alex and I were quite picky when it comes to finding a location for dinner. But luckily, we always find it.
It's the fourth day and we start to feel the casual stiffness of camping and riding. But what feels incredibly good is that we're going deeper into the country. The trails are now far from the roads. Which means we gotta be more careful or we can easily get into a very hazardous situation, especially in the bear territory. That's you see. We hit by the beauty of the scenery. The orange sunlight of the sun being low makes me feel like the end of a day in fall. It's beautiful. We come across a beautiful beach and we're gonna spend the night here. We found ourselves in the bay of a lake, riding on pebbles, the wheels in the cold water, just enjoying the magic moment of last sunrise before the sun disappears. We're two big children having fun in the sand and we get stuck many times, which at some point, Alex and I, we argue because we're tired and emotions take the lead. That's to be expected when you spend so much time so close to your friend. It's all about moving on quickly. And that's where picking up the right adventure buddy is essential. Tu vois un petit taxi mmh, Top. C'est chiant euh, l'internet et l'iPad Euh non, c'est juste euh, pour prendre le temps. Uh, we just put some gasoline in the bikes uh, because the, there won't be any uh, any fuel before uh, 200 to 250 km. So we are in a little town called Cuomo here in Finland. We are very close to the uh, Russian border. Uh, we're going northeast right now, so it's a uh, it's a good day. Luckily, we had read on the Transera Trail website that there was a long section where we won't find any gas station for almost 300 kilometers, which is basically the range of both our motorcycles. So we fill our tanks to the last drop, and we tackle this journey of very long, dusty trails lost in the deep forest of Finland, just a few kilometers away from Russia. We are riding along the no man's land. And the more we ride, the thicker the forest. I'm telling you, it feels almost like a dark atmosphere. I remember we're discussing where to sleep, and it's definitely not here, because it feels like the perfect bear territory. We just arrived in a wonderful location. Uh, there is a river just right here. We mounted the tent. <laughs> Come and look with me. We're gonna have a fire here. And look at that view. Look at this wonderful location, guys. Wow, pure madness. That's crazy, that's crazy. We're just, uh, just like maybe two or three kilometers from the, uh, from Russia. Russia is just right here. We're gonna have a very, very good night. We rode today like 250 kilometers. And now is a good time for beer. And how to get a fresh beer when you're in the middle of nowhere in Finland? You just put it in the river. And I guarantee it's gonna be fresh while you set up camp. I made all of this by myself in five minutes. Guys, today we're going to eat some freeze-dried 
French poultry. Rice and chicken curry. Hmm, looks good. This morning, the sun doesn't show up, the air is cold and it starts to rain. Just to mention, we are in June. Today, we've got some distance to cover and we are quite tight on fuel. Our ambition is to make it to the next gas station before one of us ran out of fuel. We've been riding a couple hundred kilometers since yesterday and we have almost the same to do today. We're across a small town, but unfortunately, Bonjour. there's no gas station there. We must keep riding. Something crazy about Finland is the density of population in remote places. There are houses, but most of them are empty. It feels like the country has been abandoned for decades. And there we are. We're deep in the country, there's no one around, and we love it. Mec, c'était un élan, il était énorme. Un ours. Mais non, arrête. Je touche. Oh, y'a là-haut. Ça, c'est. Les petites oreilles. C'était gros, hein. We've just seen a moose. It was a bear. It was not a bear, it was a moose. At this time of the day, I've got only 40 kilometers range left. Alex has fuel in the northern, but we've got nothing to siphon his tank if necessary. And to add to this touchy situation, the terrain becomes technical and muddy, which makes me increase my fuel consumption. C'est bien ça, le le seul endroit bien technique où tu consommes bien de l'essence. Finally, my gauge indicates I ran the bike completely out of fuel, but I managed to ride 20 more kilometers before we finally reach a gas station. This is it, we're saved. And it's a miracle. Ça s'est effondré à cause du ruisseau. C'est pas le délire. Riding makes somebody hungry for sure. But we must hurry. The weather is changing fast, rain is coming, so we got cover between the two bikes. C'est brûlant. Sens propre du terme. We're uh, just below the uh, bash, between the two motorbikes. Uh, it's raining outside and uh, we're just having a quick lunch 
It's uh, 2 p.m. in the afternoon. Hello. Hello, guys. Hello. Hello. Since we're further north in the country, the temperatures oh, are quite cold now. So we want to avoid being wet as much as possible. Ça dure longtemps? Ouais, je pense, ouais. Je t'avoue que dans le doute, moi je m'équipe direct. Un petit mot à dire? Euh, il fait humide, chef. Mais au-delà de ça, euh. Au-delà de ça, je dirais que ça va pas mal. Ah, oh, right, yeah. I don't know, maybe I want to uh, describe the location. Finland. Its scenic beauty is beyond description. Nearly two-thirds of the country is blanketed by thick woodlands, making it the most densely forested country in Europe, just waiting to be explored. When traveling, especially on a motorcycle, making it through harsh environments and rough conditions, the tiny things in life become a moment of true happiness. Like this bag of Swedish bread that we were convinced we had forgotten the day before, and therefore that we were going to eat a slice of ham. I'll tell you something, this concentrated tomato sandwich has almost become a gourmet lunch for us. Guys, uh, so today we crossed the Polar Circle. The only way to sum up this, it's cold now. It's been eight days since we are on the road. Eight days we've been away from comfort. Half of it we've been wet and cold. Yes, we've made it to the Arctic Circle, and reindeers have replaced humans. And we are now witnessing some of the most magnificent natural wonders that Finland has to offer. Il y a quelque chose à dire. It's our last moments in Finland. In a few hours, we'll be crossing to Norway for our final ascent to Nordka. We're ahead of schedule, so we spent a couple of hours alongside the river. I see the black pearl. And it felt good to relax a bit after this long off road adventure. We've been riding approximately 2,500 kilometers off-road, which is like a first time for us.
Well, in the very beginning of June, it's uh, 20 degrees outside. There's a light breeze, and the fresh water from the mountains must be at 15 degrees maximum. But it's been four days since our last bath, so we don't really have a choice today, especially since it will be even colder up there. Finally, this is it. We cross the border into Norway. There's nobody to welcome us in this part of the world. And this is the first time we are so far from home with our own bikes. And it feels like we've achieved something already. Yet, we still have 400 kilometers to reach Nordkap, including 120 off-road, the last section of our trip. But it seems like we've been fools to think we could go off-road at this period of time in Norway. And now, I understand why there are so many snowmobiles on the sides of the roads. That's because there's still a lot of snow in the trails. It means we're going to take the road to reach Alta, a big city in the north of Norway. The view is spectacular. It's a big contrast with the flat, finish landscape we've been used to. But it means the latest off-road ride in Finland was the end of it. We're finding a few tracks to say we put our tires in Norway. And what a better reason to do this as to finding a place for the night. And here it is once again, the perfect location, 40 kilometers away from the city. A slice of paradise in Norway. Hey. Qu'est-ce que c'est beau? Ils vont la fermer leur gueule <rire> Last day going up, I can say we finally made it. We're just 200 kilometers away from our final destination. And tonight, we sleep in Nordkap the northernmost point of Europe, with never-ending daylight. Let's enjoy the last ride along the sea, because I'm telling you, this road is one of the most beautiful scenery I've ever seen in my life. I want you, the most beautiful road I've ever seen in my life.
que c'est beau bordel Friends, this is the, our last uh, last night up in the north. We uh, reached the North Gap uh, earlier today. We've got a lovely, uh, lovely weather. Right now we are preparing meals. We are um, here. We are melting snow because we don't have uh, water anymore. That was a. Uh, a fantastic journey. That was that was a beautiful trip, and uh, it was a challenge for us uh, for many uh, many aspects. But uh, we're very very glad we made it. It's not an expedition like it's not a, like it's not an extreme adventure, but uh, it was worth every minute of it. We saw incredible landscapes. We saw uh, many uh, new animals. Uh, we had a lot of fun, and to see this, the uh, the midnight sunset, it's a lovely experience. Guys, uh, thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much for following uh, our journey uh, during uh, during the trip. Uh, through the stories, we received uh, many messages, and uh, it was very very nice to uh, answer each and every one of you. Uh, we're trying to make this uh, video in English so that uh, most of you understand what we're saying. Uh, so sorry for uh, the mistakes we could have made. Well, let's uh, enjoy a good meal, a good night, and let's ride tomorrow. Bye bye.